Buongiorno. Trifle desserts like the Italian tiramisu are such dessert favorites around the world. Unfortunately, not all of us can enjoy those light, airy, sweet cookies that are traditional in those desserts. Whether you are a gluten-free eater or not, these homemade gluten-free ladyfingers will knock your socks off. They really are a great snack and ingredient. My husband Scott can't even tell the difference between which ladyfingers are gluten-free or not. So, no more missing out on those treats. Here's how you can have your cake and eat it too. Today's bake focuses on traditional homemade ladyfingers. They are fabulous by themselves, dunked in coffee or hot chocolate, dipped in sweet cream or chocolate spread, or used in a trifle. See my recipe below in the description for using these lady fingers in my strawberry tiramisu or in a traditional Italian tiramisu. For my gluten-free homemade Savoyardi lady finger recipe ingredients, you'll need eggs, super fine granulated sugar, vanilla, lemon zest, if using, which is great if adding fruit to your tiramisu, super fine white rice flour, potato starch, salt, and powdered sugar for the ladyfinger tops. The name Savoyardi comes from the Duchy of Savoy, an area that covered part of France and Italy during the 15th century. They were considered royal cookies. The key in getting this recipe right is prepping all the ingredients before you begin whipping the egg whites. You should not have any pauses from the time you begin whipping the egg whites until you put the cookies in the oven. Any breaks in time will allow the egg whites to deflate and the cookies to flatten out. We don't want flat lady fingers. Let's go ahead and preheat our oven to 375 degrees. And we're gonna prepare our cookie sheets. So go ahead and you need two cookie sheets and a piece of parchment paper in each one. And we're gonna place them in the refrigerator so that they'll be cold when we put our lady finger dough on top of them because we don't want our lady fingers to spread too much in the oven. Cold cookie sheets will help that. Let's go ahead and measure out all the ingredients and put them aside so we can easily access them when we need them so we don't have that pause between whipping the egg whites and putting them in the oven. So I'm gonna use my food scale as weighing and baking is more accurate than using cup measurements. We need a total of 120 grams of sugar divided in half. So in one small bowl, I'm going to add 60 grams of sugar. And we're using super fine sugar here because we're gonna be adding it to egg whites and egg yolks. And we wanna make sure that sugar can dissolve easily. And if it's not fine enough, then it'll take a long time to dissolve. And if you are unable to find super fine sugar in your store, just take your regular granulated sugar and whiz it up in a food processor so that it's really, really fine. And I want you to take a look at this. Notice how fine that sugar is. It's almost like powder. It's not quite as powdery as powdered sugar, but it's super, super fine. So we have our two bowls of 60 grams each. I am choosing to zest a lemon, put the zest in the recipe, because I really like a fruit tiramisu. And so I think the lemon zest really adds flavor to the cookies. And the cookies are very plain. They're, they're great, they're light and airy, and they actually go with so many different things because they are such a plain cookie. But if you're having a, like a sweet, fruity trifle, then the lemon zest adds a great freshness to those cookies. But the lemon zest is purely optional. You certainly do not have to use it. Particularly for making the traditional cocoa and chocolate tiramisu, you may not want that lemon flavor in your cookie. It's totally up to you. So go ahead and zest your lemon and set it aside. So in a small bowl, we're gonna measure out 80 grams of super fine white rice flour. And 80 grams is about a half a cup plus a tablespoon. So into that, we're gonna add 40 grams of potato starch. It's about a third of a cup. And then we're gonna add a half a teaspoon of sifted salt. And I actually just sifted it and I'm just gonna put it in there. Okay, so now we're just gonna set this aside. Now when we add it to our egg whites and egg yolk mixture, we'll sift all of it in. All right, let's go ahead and prepare a piping bag. I don't have a piping bag, so I'm just gonna use a gallon size zip top bag and a glass. So the glass we want because it holds the batter in and provide structure until we're ready to pipe. So I like to put the corner, one corner of a bag at the very bottom and then fold the rest of it down over the glass. And we're gonna fill up this glass in most of the bag. So we're ready to go for that. Have a pair of scissors, 
next to you so you don't have to run around your house trying to find scissors when you're ready to use them. So everything is prepped, so let's go ahead and begin the actual process. We're going to crack our eggs and separate the whites from the yolks. And we're going to beat the yolks in a large bowl with a hand mixer. If you have one, you can also just use a large balloon whisk and that would be fine too. And we're also going to whip up our egg whites in a stand mixer. And if you don't have a stand mixer, you can just use another bowl or in, a, in your hand mixer. So we have four eggs that we're going to crack and separate. Eggs separate the easiest when they're cold. With cold ingredients, the lady fingers won't flatten out very much in the oven as they bake and we want them to stay as puffy as long as they can. To our bowl of four egg yolks, we're gonna add that 60 grams of sugar. Remember we measured out two sets of 60 grams and then we're just gonna whisk them up until they're light and fluffy. Notice how pale our egg yolks look. So now let's add in one teaspoon of vanilla and our lemon zest if you're using. And then let's just roll it up again. Okay, we're gonna set this aside while we whip our egg whites. We have our four egg whites in our stand mixer and we're going to whip this up until soft peaks. All right, we have soft peaks and we can tell because we have, we got a little bit of a curl going on there. Getting close to stiff though. All right, so at this point with our machine running still on about four, we're gonna just slowly add in our sugar, and this is 60 grams again. This is the other half of that 120 that we measured out. And we're whisking until stiff peaks. Our mixture is at stiff peaks, and this is how we know. First of all, when you lift up the whisk, look at that massive ball of egg white there, and if it's not oozing down, then we're definitely at a stiff peak mark. But also, the trails that are left behind don't curl at the top. And then we can see that just me touching it. I'm gonna do one quick last whirl of the egg yolk mixture here. Just make sure everything is, it hasn't settled at the bottom. We just wanna mix it all back up again. All right, so now we're gonna fold gently in our egg whites that we've just whipped up. So gently fold it in because we don't want to deflate our egg whites very much. So basically, we just wanna to try to get as much of that yellow color into the egg white. All right, I think that's good enough for now because we're gonna fold it more in in a minute. And then we're gonna take our flour mixture and we're just going to sift it over the egg mixture. Anything that's left over, we just discard. And then gently fold in the flour mixture. What I like about the potato starch is that it is very light and it gives stability to the flour that's in here and to these egg whites and yolks. It also soaks up any extra liquid that might be left in the cookies after we've cooked them because they need to dry out on the counter so that they can be used in a trifle dish where you want the cookies to soak up the liquid. All right, this is mixed up pretty good. There's a few little white spots in there, but that's okay because once they cook, you're not gonna see them anyway. All right, so this is ready to go into our prepared cup. And we just want to put that batter, let it ooze down into that cup. Okay, now you're gonna cut about three quarters of an inch wide the point of your bag. And I'm just going to eyeball it and just make sure it's a straight cut across. Pipe a strip about four inches long and one inch apart on your cookie sheet. And that's going to look like about that size right there. And this is a about a 17 by 12 inner measurement cookie sheet and I can get 15 lady fingers on this cookie sheet. So I'm definitely going to need two cookie sheets and maybe a really, really small one to finish off my lady fingers. And just gently apply pressure to your bag as you're squeezing out your lady fingers. So I'm gonna put this bag 
in the refrigerator while I finish topping these because I don't want the batter to warm up. So the last step that we have, some granulated sugar on the top of each of these. And you can use regular granulated, it doesn't have to be super fine here because it's not mixed in. So we actually want probably something a little bit granular so that we can have that nice little sugary crunchy top. Finally, add some powdered sugar to the top. I can see those lemon zest pieces in those cookies. In the oven it goes for 14 to 15 minutes. All right, now we're ready for our second batch and we're following the same steps as we did before. In the oven on the second rack for 15 minutes. Lady figures are done. If you're cooking one batch at a time, 14 to 15 minutes is enough. If you're cooking two batches at a time, you need closer to 15 to 16 minutes. We don't need a lot of color, just a golden brown at the top. And there you go. They're the shape of a finger, which is why they're called lady fingers. Savoyardi. I know these are still warm, but I wanna break into one so you can see what the inside looks like. It's a very light and airy, it's almost like a cake. That's how light and airy it is but they will harden up to some degree, so they'll be a great vehicle for soaking up any juices, like the strawberry milk in my strawberry tiramisu, or the strong coffee that soaks up in a regular tiramisu. So let's give these a quick try so I can tell you what they taste like. Very light, very airy, not a ton of flavor. I really think that lemon zest adds so much to this little cookie. And it is a versatile cookie because there's not any strong flavors in it. You could put it with anything. I could just eat these by themselves. They are that fabulous. Again, simple. Keep that in mind. It is a simple cookie. If you're looking for just a quick little sweet treat, this will take care of it. Allow the lady fingers to cool completely. If making tiramisu or other layered dessert, leave the lady fingers on the counter uncovered for at least one day before storing. Lady fingers are meant to harden particularly for tiramisu or other trifle-like dessert where you have ingredients that will soften the cookies as they sit. You can store them in an airtight container at room temperature for a couple of weeks. They can also be frozen for up to a couple of months. While more and more store-bought gluten-free products are available, these homemade lady fingers are a great sub for many gluten-free cookies. If you're a fan of trifle desserts with a cake or cookie layer topped with cream and fruit, these gluten-free lady fingers add great flavor and complement very well with the cream and fruit. Consider using these as a substitute for vanilla wafers in banana pudding or use them as a base for strawberry shortcake. These gluten-free lady fingers taste the same as the regular flour versions, according to Scott. If you're craving a gluten-free cookie treat, give these a try. While they are very light and airy, they are sweet and satisfying. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your support in subscribing, liking, and sharing my videos. Until next time, Coco Chere Il Mundo.